My name is Stephanie Afrifa, and I'm hosting this Q&A and panel talk. Uh, Beth N, this is such an honor to be able to have this conversation with you. The whole conversation br brought such a smile on my face and like your perspective on um, the industry and your work, your expectations, knowing what's your goal and how you handle it with so much tenderness. It's just, it's so inspirational and I'm happy to be creating this like generational connection right now. Um, so I'm here with three designers, um, Bas Kosters, Irene Ha and Darwin Winkler. They are Dutch designers. Um, and they have like a paper and a pen in front of them and they wrote down so many questions. I also have some <laughs> questions from the online viewers, but first I want to ask you a question myself because um, I'm the editor at large at Folk, but I also research and create uh, intentional spaces for black women to feel safe. And the thing is what I hear a lot from black women here in the Netherlands is that they always feel like they are a guest in someone else's narrative. You know, we're always working on, well, Dutch people, white Dutch people in the Netherlands are always working on diversity and inclusivity, and they only invite us to talk about those topics. They don't, don't invite us to talk about whatever we are working on ourselves, or just like playing in the fields, or biking around Rotterdam, or, you know, feeding my cats or something. And that takes a lot of, like, energy, and, and you know, it doesn't make us feel safe enough to be who we really are. And, I can imagine that you often had experiences where you didn't feel safe, not physically, but like mentally. How did you deal with that? Oh, this is a good, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a very good question. I have never had the experience. That's, a, that's wow. interesting. Um, I think it's generational too. And I, and I grew up more in the, the garment business. Um, and, I, and I say the garment business because I, I like to always differentiate that between fashion and the apparel industry, because what happened with fashion, it got to be, uh, you know, uh, an illusion of, woo, sky and a pie, I be, where the ground, the foundation of the industry that I come from was really teaching me a lot, which I never had because I had such support. I always had support from the people I worked for. There was more of a Jewish environment, of course, because the garment business is mostly run by Jews in the back of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I always had such support. I've never had, which is good for you to know, I've never had what some people witness or have struggled through. Um, and I, 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 it's good to know that somebody like myself never had that because I never did. Definitely. I never had to, you know, felt a little bit like sometimes, you know, I'm trying to think if I ever, I mean, I had an argument when I was a kid with my boss about, the Israeli-Palestine war, and she stopped speaking to me. But wow. <laughs> things like that. Yeah, you know, like that was when I, that I should have been wiser and to know that, you know, you just don't talk about that to a person that you love that's Jewish because they might not feel the same way you do. Mm -hmm. So does that say something about the sensitivity of this generation, what you talked about earlier before? Absolutely, too. absolutely. Yeah. And also, like, you know, it, it really is something that's quite different because... I, I know that, you know, everybody wanted to be part of the game. I mean, there was, it wasn't that many people trying to get into this little island of industry. Yeah. It became this, this, you know, it's not, I always say to people, you know, the, the industry of apparel, which is the fashion industry, is a tiny island. Mm. And there's now so many inhabitants that's come onto the island. It's made it very, 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 very full in its sense. So... Everybody from the outside started and wanted to be part of this little elitist place that nobody ever, ever thought about being a part of before. And it happened, I, I guess I witnessed it happen maybe late 90s, maybe, early 2000, maybe. Yeah. It became that, that need to be in those outside people who wanted to be part of fashion. Well, you know, in the industry, there was nobody anybody who cared about it because everybody had a life outside of that. And now it's quite different. Yeah. yeah. I totally understand the difference in, in our perspectives indeed. And I think that's a very interesting base for our conversation because Darwin, you wrote down so many <laughs> questions and I think talking topics. Do you already Please. have a question for Beth Ann? Um, should I, I think it's already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, one, once again, thank you so much because as well, um, hearing your conversation has lighting up so many joys and um, feeling comfortable 
of the topics I've been talking about, and um, one of my questions has been, I, I come from the Caribbean islands, and Aruba is um, colonized by uh, the Netherlands. And uh, we as students coming from the Caribbean island, we, has, we have always been um, belittled by um, saying such as word um, jet lag, you have a cultural jet lag, or maybe um, you're too exotic. So they would label a lot of things um, about us. Um, and I think my question would be, how would you um, tackle that in, uh, in our situation, for example? How would I what it? Tackle it. Tackle, tackle this. It. Yeah. You know, this is interesting. You're now at the stage where it's changing. You're now, I look at you right now, beautiful as you are. Thank you for looking so great. Dazzled my eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. You know, thank. This is what we were just talking about. Someone, you know, people who basically are embracing so much uh, of differences right now, and it it is hard. Back in the day, yes, if you were, ex you know, you exotic, you weren't gonna you know how how beautiful they would say. Oh, he's a little too exotic. I mean, she's a little too exotic. Or if you were of color, you know, the fashion model would be only put into the summers or, or resort clothes, never the winter clothes. So these are things that, you know, the, the mindset had been such a, a, a consistent thing where people just sort of believe this. Uh, it's changing. It, it's changed. It, you know, it's not everybody's not going to get a chance, as I said, to be successful at what they do. Because once again, the island is tiny. Mm -hmm. The land on it you know it's like the real estate of fashion is small but the people who want to come and get into on the island or got, come into the industry is plenty it's 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 beyond the amount so not all will fit through the tube a lot of people will fall by the wayside you just have to stay the course believe in yourself know that you've got something you know shut out the noise and keep going because this is your moment right now in what you and those like you are being embraced because it's not cool not to embrace you right now. <laughs> Just Thank be true. You so much. You're welcome so much. Yay, Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> so, boss, I think um, there's something Beth Ann talked about that really resonates with you and your work. She talked about the human consciousness. It's not about um, fashion, it's the human consciousness. Can you let me know what you think about that? Um, well, thank you very much for your uh, moving uh, being. Um, and the question that rose to me today is that um, that everybody is trying very much to be inclusive, which is very good. It's definitely something that is on the move. But I think there's also a lot of sensitivity around with people looking at each other, we are in a big uh, cultural movement of looking at each other with uh, judgments and with um, opinions. So actually, Angelique already touched this subject a bit. How can we move from this moment of everybody making a gesture um, with kindness towards a more... Uh, um, new awareness, because that's what I'm missing now in this um, situation, is that we're doing our best, but we maybe forget to be kind. So how can we embrace this kindness and this softness um, for the coming uh, period? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that's that thing, uh, Harry Styles has that thing about kindness. You know, everything with him is kindness. Um, and for the you who are youthful in your youth, who are conscious of that, you just have to be a pure example. Best we can do is do our best around each other and ourselves. If you are an example of it, maybe it'll become contagious to another. That's the best we can do because we can't, as much as I'd like to change the whole world, especially political right now, because I'm living you know, in the politics of everything, you know, it's not gonna happen. You just got to stay in your lane and do your best. Do your do your moment in your neighborhood. Stay and just keep on. And probably with your energy will sort of affect those who are working for you. And I love this picture. Gosh. Um, and, and then you have to think about 
they will go on and take something else. They'll leave your little group and they'll go on and they'll know how to be kind too. Because it's, it's something that's an example. We can only do that an example is we have to speak it and be it. And then, you know, and you just do your best and don't get discouraged by being good. Know the difference of being also be good, but don't be taken advantage of either. <laughs> be wise. Try to find wisdom within it all. Thank you. That's beautiful. You're welcome. Thank you. And I love where you are and all your little group there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Irina, wonderful. do you have a question for Beth Ann? Yeah, I just actually, hi. I'm super happy I can be here. Um, I just wrote a lot of stuff down because there was like a lot of things that I felt like resonated with how I feel when you said like, it's like not activism, but like you, like you don't necessarily say like go out the door and say like, let me be an activist today. You just go out the door and you rec recognize yourself in some things that are happening around you. And I think it was so nice when you said like, when you open the gate and let it flood that the water stays. And I feel like we're like, in this moment where it's like another gate is opening and I'm like trying to swim through it. Um, yeah. And then I had like a more joyful question. I was like, who are the people around you that you celebrated all these things with? Say that again? Who are the people around you that you could like celebrate all these things with? Like all these moments who are the in your people life? around me? Yeah. Who are the people around me? Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah, this is interesting. I, I have a, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, a lot of people actually, and sometimes, you know, I'm a very, I, you know, I'm, I've learned that I'm kind of an introvert as much as I'm a big social person. Um, and I think with the pandemic, it helped me to, you know, it gave me freedom to be sort of quiet. But there are a lot of people that um, in my life, because of the fact of who I am, you always sort of, you know, you sort of like attract the people that are like yourselves oftentimes. You know, you, those people who, who appreciate you are going to be around you. People who don't appreciate what you're saying or being are not going to be around you because, you know, you have different ethics, right? So in this case, for me, I have many wonderful uh, people. I'm right now working on a documentary. So, you know, the young man, that's, that's the director of my documentary. It's, it's the story. This, the documentary is about my story, my life. Um, he's half French and half Asian. And he's the audience. I mean, he's he's younger, he's far younger than I. He's he's very impressed by me and learning all of my different stories. And the more he's around me, the more he gets to know more. So it's people like that that makes you always feel very good. Younger people that you speak to, people in their twenties, people in their teens that you speak to, because you. If I'm blessed by the fact of having a certain amount of uh, like sage old wisdom, the, the the way I speak, the way I think. I don't think like the average person. I don't say what everybody's saying on social media. I sometimes, I'm oftentimes quite different than that. You know, I don't agree with a lot of things that they say or do. Um, and so I stand up, you know, like being a lone wolf in some way, I think. But I think the way I'm thinking is more like towards what our young man was saying about kindness. You know, it's just, you just have this need to broaden the street. I'm not here to criticize. I'm here to educate. And I think that's where I, I, I get very lucky that my intention is for others, not for myself. And uh, I'm here to help to, like I said, education is everything. But those who basically don't even know that they're in the wrong, they have to sort of see how that was wrong. So I, I'm, I'm lucky that people who are like me want to be have me around them and vice versa. Yeah, that's really lovely to hear. Do you feel that way about you? Yeah, I feel the same. I would like to also surround myself with people who understand, I think. Yeah. That's what yeah, is well, the most come. important. If you, if you, the good news, if you eliminate those who don't, you yeah. leave room for those who do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, some real life <laughs> advice. To, I did not expect this when it walked out of my door. <laughs> well, I like that. Yeah. Everybody tells me, oh, you remember when you said, I never remember anything I said, <laughs> but remember. I'm always good like that. I come up with some good, good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or master teacher right here. Yeah. So I also have some questions from our online viewers. They're not so much about activism, but I think you're going to give us some interesting anecdotes. Um, one of the question is, who was the favorite photographer you worked with and why? Oh, so I have to say peace out on that because I never was a print model and I didn't have 
So I wasn't that I wasn't that girl. I, I was a runway model, and yeah. so runway models are just work with designers per se. Yeah. We didn't have that opportunity. So there, I've been photographed, mm -hmm. um, you know, once a, once in a while. So I didn't have a, an array of photographers yeah. that I would would say. But of course, since I only had a couple that are famous, which is Bruce when he was young and Stephen Mysell when he was doing well, coming up doing well. Stephen Mysell is always one of be, will always be one of my favorite photographers, mm -hmm. as well as the sweet and the you know now gone Peter Lindbergh, as well as Paula Reverse. I just wrote that last night to a girl. So this is just common in my mind. I yeah. you know, Peter and I had a closeness. I was with him two weeks before he passed away coming on from a plane on a plane from uh, uh, Spain and it's just he's you know I, you know you always want like when I did this British photo shoot I was so god I, maybe Peter would have loved to have done this but it, you know you were limited to who types of photographers yeah. so I don't have anybody other than those guys I just mentioned they're they're my even though I didn't work with them per se they still I love what they've done and I had a model agency so I, I judge things by that yeah and Bruce of course you know you love the the the, the history that Bruce has sort of made for a Calvin Klein or Ralph Lauren and those ways and those those stories that he tell he tells when he does editorial. Thank you. Um, and another question is, this is a big one. Do you have a favorite fashion memory? One memory. <laughs> yes, one I do. Um, I say Ise Mayaki in, in Tokyo. Uh, I have many. It's true, but Ise Mayaki in Tokyo. Uh, or maybe something with Kenzai too. Okay, you said one. Let me stay, but just focus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I, I have to say, walking down the runway in Tokyo, trying our best because we were so known to entertain. We were so known to entertain. I was working for Ishii Mayaki. I helped him produce a couple of his shows, even from a distance. This time he wanted me to come. And I remember walking down the runway trying to get something out of these people and they the Japanese just sit they could love it but they would just sit and look and here we were working hard to get a little like yay or clap they did none of that and I remember walking down that runway thinking I've lost I thought I literally I watched my youth leave me like I could just feel it and it was a long runway and I always <laughs> remember that moment uh that <laughs> people say you felt your youth leave you I said yeah, I don't know why, but that was the moment. If I ever felt like, when did you feel that you were no longer young? It was that moment that in Tokyo. exact moment. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and the last question from an online viewer is, what is the best advice you ever received? We know you're good at giving advice, but the advice yeah, you received. No, I, I had a, my coach, I have, and I still use it. Stay in, stay in your own lane when I ran track. That I apply to my life, stay in your own lane. Uh, the free, uh, the other thing is um, the oh, the light of the load, the free of the journey. Ah. Yeah, you know, it's just true that the more you take off, the, the better you feel, the lighter your load in your house, the, the things that you need to sort of like, you know, just make less. Yeah. the better you have to move forward. That's so the truth of it is I have a lot of expressions <laughs> that I tell people <laughs> now, like stay in your, you know, you know, the, the, I think, but, you know, staying in your own lane and, and, and run your own race, run your own race. Mm. That, that was my coach used to tell me when I ran track and I've taken that through my life, you know, trying when I get concerned. I never want to be with somebody else once anyway. But it's also wonderful to know that, you know, when you think you're, you're not doing your thing and you start getting distracted looking over there, don't do that. Don't worry about what they're doing. Try to stay focused on what you're doing. Be inspired by others, but don't let that become your point. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're all taking notes here. That's very great mm -hmm. advice. Thank you for sharing this. Um, we have still a few minutes left with Beth Ann. Is there any one of you who still has a question for her? Now is your moment. <laughs> Can I? Yes. Of course, um, let's go. Well, uh, it's really interesting that um, you come from the runway world, actually. And um, I feel, and I actually I want to ask, where is fashion going forward? Is it still going to still be the runway? Because I still, or I feel that things are- Oh, no, 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 just so you, so you know. This is, let me help quickly, because I know maybe another question. The, the runway, when I say the runway-, runway. It was a, a, Yeah, it was a division that, 
there was only one way models that serviced the fashion industry, mm -hmm. which was the designers, fittings, all that. Mm -hmm. That ended, that ended in the seventies. Now print girls service everybody. So it's just one industry now. It's no longer the print models and the, the, the runway models. The run, runway models, there's no longer. They, the run, girls who do print also do runway. You do runway, you also do print. There's only one division right now, just, just to make that clear to you. Yeah, yeah thank you so, so much. And you, and your question is, go ahead. Um, no, I wanted to ask um, about, um, because I feel that uh, runways are becoming, um, I feel maybe to like an old fashioned uh, way of seeing f uh, fashion in a way. And um, I was wanting to ask maybe how do you see um, representation in fashion going forward from maybe a couple of years coming on? In, in the future. Maybe in, in, in the future, exactly. Yeah. Good question. You think it's old fashioned. Okay, I, I don't see it like that. But I think, you know, now that they've, you know, and. You know, and everybody can be part of, anybody can be a fashion model, everybody can mm -hmm. be anything. People are afraid to say no to anything because, you know, they're afraid they're going to be shut down or be looked at as uh, non-inclusive. So I think anything goes. I don't think that it's going to be anything other than truth. Everybody's just going to be, I think anything goes because I think people are afraid not to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to be backwards, but I'm also old school. I still see certain elitism mm -hmm. I think it's things something still for us to reach for to, to really hope that we if we can only get there but now it's pretty much anyone can do anything yeah. thank you so much I mean I look at the fashion male model and I still say how many men think that they can wear those clothes when the boys are so skinny and they don't look particularly handsome yeah. mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because that's the way of the, the moment right now and it's right. it's okay yeah. They seem to be succeeding at it. Yeah. Thank I think you. it's going to continue to be what it is. Yeah. You know, Beth Ann, before Stephanie will close, because we have got one and a half minute left with you, it's been such an honor for all of us, I think, to have you with us. And I want to say also, really, if we speak about kindness, that I want to thank Roger, beautiful Roger, and Peter, who have bridged the connection with you from New York to Los Angeles and Amsterdam, uh, and that is really also a beautiful tribal fashion effort. It's wonderful that we can have you over here with us in Europe, and you. hearing your wisdom. We totally loved it. Yes. Thank you. I co-signed that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah, having this conversation with us, answering our questions, and I hope to talk to you another time again. <laughs> and you live also in, in Holland? Yes, I do too, yeah. You live in Holland, yes. Everyone there now lives in Holland. Yes, everyone here yes. lives in Holland, yeah. Yes. Are you coming to visit us one time? I haven't been in a long time, and I don't see because I have too much, you know, house in Mexico, and I spend a lot of time in Morocco. Ah. So I, don't, I see a, no reason to come back there now in life. <laughs> and I'm trying to, like I told you. We will make one up. Right. I also <laughs> my own advice. I, uh, I stay in my lane. <laughs> <laughs> we I, will seduce you. The freak of the journey. I don't try and do more than I need to do. It is really required to do everything. So I, I, less is more. <laughs> that yeah. makes so much Thank sense. You so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you too, and I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so we are gonna continue the conversation about activism. Um, I can only imagine that this conversation or hearing Beth Ann speak has sparked so much in you guys. Um, you all, um, well, no, let's ask first, do you all consider yourselves activists? Bas, I'm gonna start with you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Elaborate. Well, um, I was thinking about this subject, of course, uh, the last couple of weeks preparing for today. And I realized in this, in this uh, recent kind of um, abrupt movement of society where so much is going on that I'm quite a salon activist. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it doesn't make that less sincere. It's just in my DNA mm -hmm. to, uh, to um, make my own movement, to make my own statements. And uh, I do uh, believe that I'm an activist yeah. in that movement. Yeah. What about you, Darwin? Yes, I do consider myself as an activist, um, for sure. I think uh, where does this come to is um, coming from an island, especially a, a small island, mm -hmm. where um, different fashion has been presented to us in a different way. And when um, we observe that, and then when we uh, step our, you know, uh, warm foot to in a colder um, country, mm -hmm. um, then we realize that what we have been absorbing and romanticizing fashion, coming here, it's totally a different break and um, a different perspective in fashion as well. And that's where the clash has been for me, yeah. um, where um, uh, too, I've been too, uh, too much romanticization into the fashion industry and then coming here and then noticing that that doesn't uh, exactly include in my, in, my act, in my way of presenting myself yeah. or feeling at home, let's say like that. Mm. Um, so from there, from there on, I felt like I hated fashion because of that. Yeah. Um, and from there on, I was like, no, I'm going to stay in fashion to actually change something about it yeah. and, um, and talk about it and educate people about it. So yeah. I do activism through my, through my work, through my, my fashion, work, through yeah. my culture, educating that and, and giving a voice for the mar marginalized um, Caribbean, Latin American that we have never spoke about. Um, so I felt it is important to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much. What about you, Irene? Well, it's really funny because like, when I grew up, I was just really, um, I felt very alienated here, of course. And it was not necessarily like, when I heard the word activism, I was like, that's like standing with like a spanduk, like a really big sign, yeah. like Vivian Westwood-ish. And I was like, that's so punk. I'm not punk. And then at one moment, I remember I talked to a white friend of mine. She was just like, but you are super punk by being yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I am actually an activist also in the way I communicate to people. It's not necessarily about talking or holding banners or whatever, but it's in a way of living and like um, represent a certain group of people or feel connected with this group of people and telling a story. And then I was like thinking like, oh yeah, I'm low key action activist. Mm. And it started, especially when other people started seeing me as this. And I think that's why I felt really like what Bethan says, like resonated with me where she's like, I did not like sign up to become an activist or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> and how do you use fashion um, in your like activist or maybe it's yeah. not really activist, but yeah. it happens to be. Um, how do you, s you, do you use fashion in that, in that language? I think already like the step to going to an art school, being um, like growing up in the Netherlands, being Asian, growing, uh, uh, going to an art school is really like not like the usual thing for me to do. Like um, if you're Asian, you're mostly expected to uh, go study or whatever. And I feel like already being in this lane mm -hmm. uh, opened up like possibilities or like more representation for younger people around me. Um, and then also I think it's in the stuff that I make. I really try to communicate with really bold colors and use really my own aesthetic language. Yeah. Um, and do really a lot of research in bootlegging culture because I think that's where there's a lot of like racism or like microaggressions towards Asian people if there's like, because uh, a lot of bootleg has been like uh, produced in Asia. So I'm really trying to shift this narrative and turn around what their perceptions are of people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And Bas, I think we can make a connection to the performance going on, the love energy yes. ma machine. Um, how do you uh, use fashion as a language in your activism and what do we see here right now? Well, what we see here is my uh, lovely team. Um, they are embroidering on pieces of uh, cloth. Um, there is no end result in sight. Um, what it is about is the thought um, of the beauty um, and energy that comes from working together to uh, put your mind on the same goal, 
um, to um, to spend your time and your um, intentions on creating together. And, you know, it is very serious, but I do have also a cute, like, um, association with it when you have the Care Bears who, yeah. who will form a rainbow together and they shine their uh, energy uh, <laughs> towards the sky. I think there's just something really beautiful in creating together. And, I mean, I'm, of course, always considered the the kind of like the ballsy um, designer but I think a lot has shifted mm -hmm. and I think this initiative shows the kindness that uh, I embody and that I want to bring across that it is just so important to give your attention yeah. to this world and in this case we give our intention to the importance of creation, mm -hmm. um, but we also show that it's important to uh, to give your uh, energy for the greater good, yeah. whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we create together, and I will yeah. join them yeah. later myself. And this is so interesting because you're saying um, for the greater good and. Um, how we define the greater good is very political. At this moment in time, it's very political. So Darwin, I was thinking like, uh, Bas was saying working on the same goal. Do we even have the same goal? And um, how do you balance working on um, bridging that gap um, and creating the world you want to see? Right. Because that are two different things. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I have to go back to this because everything for me is connected, you know? Yeah. Um, so basically, um, for example, um, at, in a, I have to mention this, um, in Aruba or in the Caribbean, we have to teach, we have to learn Dutch. We have mm. to know all the history in Dutch. Mm. And when I come here and then I, they ask me, where are you from? I'm from Aruba. And they don't know where Aruba is. Um, or they say, um, you know, certain things that I'm like, oh, really? But you, I think you're supposed to know about about our history at least but they don't know so that already for me was like a clash right there yeah and i was like how how dare you um colonize our islands and not really knowing anything about so our sad. heritage and knowing everything about your um culture mm -hmm. um or your your um your uh history you know so for me that was already like a boundary there and from there on it set me to like no I'm going to teach I'm going to educate I'm going to talk about it yeah. and I'm going to do it in a way in a humble way I'm going to do it in my own way that they can see and experience this and bring my people uh, to, to, to become an inclusive and, yeah. and, and not marginalize anyone or really uh, yeah, pointing, uh, pointing pointing fingers in a way you know yeah. so um, so for me, that's where I stand uh, from here, to really kind of like educate and share and to bring this inclusivity and to really be like, you know, um, I also want to share my artists. I also want to share my musicians. I also want to share um, um, the art we have in the Latin or Caribbean um, um, region. So let's, let's have a conversation. Let's discuss about it, you know, and not um, push it away or try not to understand it. So, uh, yeah. That's so interesting. Uh, Irene, can you chime in on that? Do you recognize what he yeah. what he's saying? Yeah, I think it's, um, especially like if you see like the sensitivity of this age, I do think that we all have to act out of true compassion with our, uh, in ourselves. Like it sounds super spiritual, but I do think it's really like, I'm really not so, yeah. <laughs> but it's really like, I do think it's really about understanding the other or listening or yeah. really going into conversation uh, in a conversation yeah. because also i can also say like hey darwin i don't understand <coughs> this can you mm -hmm. explain me yeah. or like also what we do right now getting together mm -hmm. so i think the importance of community is like really big these days mm -hmm. and i was thinking also i was thinking a lot about inter intersectionality mm -hmm. because um I mean, we are all in the same battle at the, at the end, even though like, I mean, like I'm Asian and you're from Aruba, you know, it's like, 
we what all, battle? What is that battle? Yeah, the battle for equality. I think, mm -hmm. I th at least, or like hu like human respect, or yeah. like mm -hmm. respect, or like. Um, what, is that what is a battle against capitalism? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've been reading. Stuff, but I feel like I'm I'm also somehow in there, like a product of this like, capitalism. So yeah. you're really, I think, going into this world as a designer, especially in this age, you're, like, you are gonna question yourself definitely. You're gonna stand here and just sit here and like, okay, where am I from? Uh, what are my perspectives? What is going on around me? Mm -hmm. And of course you're getting in this like really big, like, what the fuck is going on <laughs> mood? Yeah. And therefore I think it's really good to unite and mm. turn back to ourselves, turn back to the people around us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anjali, would you like to respond to that, to everything you're hearing at this table right now? It's it's such a beautiful table, and it's such an incredible conversation we had with Bethan. And uh, I'm really, really, this is one of the biggest gifts of this day for me already. Oh, wow. Because I've been questioning myself if I've been an activist. Yeah. Because Mo Feld, who has been working with me and the entire team, she pointed it out. She's actually Dutch Fashion Foundation is like activist. Mm. foundation and in a way I never saw it that way but in a way she's so right because for 20 years on we tried to do in a very silent way yeah. behind the designers like lifting up mm. the people with their voices their diversity their their yeah their unique talents and their unique voices and to be behind that it has to come also from within you yeah. And I'm very spiritual, like I really very, very much believe in a holistic Same. approach, you yeah. know, it's so yeah. important and yeah. I, I really defend that strongly with my hours, my minutes, my not nights of sleep, my yeah. father that I did not see that passed away, you know, I really give my life for it. So yeah. yes, I think I'm an activist. That's amazing. Yeah, and I think we all are here, everybody here in the team. Yeah. They're all putting their very best out because of the exact same things. Mm. I, what I'm hearing from you, thank you. That's really important. Like Percy was such a good friend of mine. He never spoke about it. And you do. And it's really important that you do that. And uh, already to hear it just once, it will make people change. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's so important that we all get together and my dream for today was to do that again. Yeah. Get united, like yeah. balance, mm -hmm. talk with each other, get to know each other, mm -hmm. exchange. And in the end of the day, it's all about communication, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. So I am wondering, um, you as fashion designers, what would you need for the fashion industry to you know, move forward steadily? Um, well, for me, uh, definitely it's inclusivity. I, yeah. I am begging for inclusivity. I am yeah. begging for um, a table where everyone is different, everyone is diverse. And yes, that's what I want, so let's go. Yeah. Um, I cannot wait to have this conversation with so many other cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it also comes from, uh, as a child, you know, mm -hmm. you, we want to also be educated. We also want to um, start talking about these topics. Yeah. And, um, um, at, a, uh, at a small um, age, and I think it should be implemented already, and and yeah. and then we build from there on, you know. So I, I that's my hunger now to mm -hmm. really um, make sure that the kids all are right, make sure that the the, um, the new yeah generation the new generation lead, yeah. can really lead what we really wanted. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. We yeah. only have a few seconds <coughs> left, but I want you to chime in on that because. You know, we all want inclusivity, but you are th thinking a lot about like, how do we move forward from the state we're in right now, just talking about it and not really having it like, just- Boss, you can do it, elevator pitch. I know. <laughs> elevator well, pitch. I mean, <laughs> I think it is very important that we create space for discussion and space for knowledge. And so thank you, Angelique, for uh, bringing us all together. And that's also what uh, Beth Ann said, education is everything. And then I think we really need to slow down the pace of fashion because fashion is ridiculous. Yeah. What is fashion if yeah. fashion is not us? Yeah. It's not about humans, it's about creation, yeah. it's not about clothes, it's not about cloth. It's not about all those things. Fashion needs to fucking take a breath and take time 
to connect. I think your stories are so beautiful, and I admire that you take your uh, your position that could be painful also, and just break through and um, create new landscapes. But I think it is important that there is a space for those stories. Yeah. And then um, also, for example, our whole fashion industry, you know, I live here in the center, and the first thing that everybody was talking about change in the fashion industry, what happened as soon as the, um, the shops were open again, people were buying cheap clothes uh, mm. that are e equally expensive as a drink from the big coffee company. Yeah. So I think it's just so important that people are educated. Yeah. You know, our governments should uh, talk about uh, the why f uh, fashion is so valuable, why mm -hmm. clothes should cost yeah. more money than they yeah. do. So I think it is so important that we kind of break open space yeah. for to talk about all these things yeah. on a human level, mm -hmm. also about the humanity of the people that produce our clothes. Yes, definitely. All these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Education is key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're opening a whole nother topic here because I can talk for <laughs> hours yeah. about cultural sustainability, mm. sustainability of the resources of the earth. Like there's so I I'm sad that you know we have to end this conversation right now, but I want to thank you all so much for being part of this conversation. And this is not a begin. We're like you know way ahead already. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to all the viewers, and I'm gonna wish everyone a nice <laughs> evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>